When people ask what the future of boxing looks like, there may be no better answer than Virgil Ortiz Jr. A 22-year-old from Dallas, Texas. Not just perfect in the first 15 fights, but dominant. A picture-perfect blend of speed. Letting the punches fly. Power. Wicked attack from Ortiz. And charisma. He is just fun to watch. And the consensus top prospect in the sport in 2019. He's just caught a big left uppercut and goes down. Beautiful shot. The future of boxing is coming with you fast. And this fight is over. The homecoming, a rousing success. And his name is Virgil Ortiz Jr. Herrera's out! Herrera's out! It's over! Wow! Hey, Mario Lopez here. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with the man himself, Mr. <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya. What's going on, Oscar? What's up, Mario? Always great to see you, brother. All good, all good. This is fun because I love previewing fights with you. I love uh, going over either old ones, and in this case, we're going up against, or I should say, we're going to be uh, breaking down and dissecting one of the brightest talents in the sport, Mr. Virgil Ortiz Jr., who's, yeah. who's got a tough, tough fight uh, ahead of him. And Golden Boy is getting back into the spotlight of the sport itself. It is going down. Why is it so important for boxing to return at this point? Well, I mean, first of all, we're, we're super, super excited, man. I mean, and we couldn't start with a better fighter. Virgil Ortiz, as you all know, is he's 15 and 0, 15 knockouts. Um, He's always giving a great show. He's always uh, trying to knock you out, which obviously he has. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it couldn't be a, a better timing. Um, it couldn't be with a better opponent. Vargas is the real deal. Yeah, tough guy. So it's, it's he's a tough guy. And uh, but you know we believe in Virgil, and I think Virgil's gonna be a world champion. You know sooner than later. And what's exciting about Virgil and makes him, I think, such a um, a fighter to watch is. He's obviously young, he's obviously hungry, and he's undefeated, like you said. Yeah. But to me, he seems incredibly focused. He seems very disciplined, no distractions. Right. Doesn't let things like social media or girls or whatever get in the way of his focus. He se right. seems very mature for his age, yeah. no, no, for a is. guy that's uh, uh, gonna be headlining, right? Well, he knows what he wants. And he knows what he wants to accomplish. He wants to be world champion many times over. Mm -hmm. He's challenging everybody at 147. Right. And you watch, within the year, you watch, he's going to wipe out everybody at 147. And that's a very deep, talented it is. Uh, division right it there. Is. And you're right. There's nothing wrong. If, if they're willing to fight him. If they're willing to fight him, exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about his uh, opponent for a second. Right. I mean, with a record of 31 wins, Vargas is a seasoned pro. How much will his experience play a factor into this fight? It's, it's going to play a, a big factor. I mean, you take a look at Vargas, who has been in there with many great champions. Um, he's been in there with a, a lot of fighters who uh, who have different styles, right? Whether it's power, speed, leg movement, uh, side to side, uh, they're slippery. Um, Vargas has seen it all, so this is probably his first real test. I believe that Virgil is the type of fighter that, as every fight goes on, yeah, he's getting stronger, he's getting faster, he's getting bigger, smarter. Um, I believe that he's ready for a world title now. Uh, you can make the argument that he can go in there with anybody at 147 and beat them. Well, we're, we've got the man himself actually uh, uh, ready to talk to us right now. Virgil! All right, well, joining us now, the 2019 Prospect of the Year by Ring Magazine, Mr. Virgil Ortiz. How you doing, Virgil? I'm pretty good. How about you guys? Doing good, man. All good, my man. All good. Looking forward to the July 24th, man. Are you ready? Are you been training hard? Hey, yeah, man, I've been training for this fight for like half a year. Already. You know I'm ready. <laughs> so how do you feel about headlining? And, and I know this has probably been your, your biggest layoff, right? Since uh, in between oh, bouts, yeah. obviously, with the pandemic and everything coming. How do you feel um, now headlining? It's a big card. Golden Boy's first one. Uh, being, I know you're obviously feeling prepared, but how do you feel just emotionally about everything going on? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. You know, I'm very, uh, I feel very, like, honored that I'm headlining the first card from Golden Boy in the zone, you know. Uh, I know that a lot of people are going to be tuning in because it's the first one. And like Oscar said, I think this is probably the, the perfect fight because it's going to be a war. You know, where both of us are coming to fight, I've seen a lot of his interviews with him and his coach saying that they're trying hard to 
to upset me and that they have a game plan. And you know what? We do too. And I'm not coming to lose. You know what? Let me ask you a question. Um, how are you going to hit them if you have to social distance like six feet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Long jab. Oh my Long God. ass jab right there. <laughs> For real. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question right there. But this camp has been going well. I know you're working down with Robert Garcia and all the guys down there uh, in Riverside. How is it uh, this time around? And I know you and Robert, they, everything's been going uh, great so far. Are you continuing to learn? Are you continuing to, to build as a team there together? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, every time we have a new opponent, we always have something new to learn. There's something new to work on. We uh, watch my previous fights to see if there's, you know, little, little details to uh, work on. You know, it's always the small details that separates the – the good mm -hmm. fighters from the great fighters to the elite fighters, you know? So there's always stuff to work on. And, you know, we've had six months to do that. And I, I feel like that uh, I'm more prepared now than I than I was if I were to fight March. And I think that the fight's going to go well. What well, One thing, Virgil, I think this might be your first time fighting this way since maybe early amateur days. Um, but you're not going to have a live audience, right? Mm. Which actually, as a viewer, I think is kind of cool because it makes right. it very dramatic. Yeah. You can hear everything. I don't think it takes anything away. But how do you feel about performing at this level with no live crowd there and it being so quiet? You know, I think it's going to be different but familiar at the same time because, you know, it's just like sparring, you know. Um, it's just like sparring. There's no one right, really right, watching exactly. you, cheering you on and sparring. And uh, I spar world-class opponents, too, at the gym, too. So I don't think it's going to be too big of a factor. But at the same time... I think it's going to be good for for the fans because it's going to be real yeah. raw. You're, you're going to hear yeah. everything. You're going to hear breathing. You're going to exactly. hear when a punch lands, oh, and bro, the, you know they're they're going to go like Ugh, or something like that. But yeah, yeah uh -huh. it's it's going to be a good experience. I th I was just telling I was just uh, telling these guys too, as opposed to like if you're watching an NBA game and you're hearing all the sneakers, or even yeah. the football or baseball right. game, you have the energy. <laughs> this is so cool because yeah. it's. It's uh, like gladiators, like you said, you can hear everything. You still hear the drama in the corners mm -hmm. with the trainers. They darken the arena. It makes it very theatrical and dramatic. So I think it's, it's going to be awesome, man. Hey, Virgil, right now we want to take a look at some of your fights, man, and we can uh, uh, break them down a little bit and, and uh, tell us what was going through your mind. So this is an undercard at a Canelo fight in Dallas, in Dallas. right, Oscar? Yeah, this was my second fight. Uh, this guy was Ernesto Hernandez. I didn't feel like I really warmed up for this fight. I didn't even feel like I was fighting, to be honest. Like, I wasn't in that yeah. mindset yet. So when I knocked him out, you know, I just felt like it, it happened fast. Everything happened so fast. I didn't know what happened. Oh, this is my fifth fight, fight in Vegas. This is the fight I learned the most from because this is the first fight where I didn't knock him out in the first round. So I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I gassed myself out really bad in the first round. And in the second round, I was really tired. And I, I happened to, yeah, I, I was hitting him with everything, as you can see, with everything. Oh, no, those, every every punch has bad intentions yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. Is, is this the fight right where you learn to maybe pace body, yourself a little bit more? I, I uh, fake it. Oh, oh beautiful uppercut. Beautiful. Jesus. But oh, it was it was after this fight where I had, a, I had to teach myself to be patient and to know that not everyone's going to be knocked out in the first round or knocked out at all. Right. Let him, yeah, Jack Reese doing a good job right there. Yeah, he does. No, that was beautiful. Yeah, those were some bad intentions coming in. Oh, this is my ninth fight, I believe. Uh, this guy was pretty tough, too. He came in five pounds heavy, and I was, I'm not going to lie. I still got to make weight on this fight, one of my last 140 fights. And uh, this was a no, he was pretty tough. Casino, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful right, body. We landed some good body shots right there. Another one. More. But yeah, um, this guy came in so heavy, and you know it, it was kind of difficult at first. But you know I started uh, landing the body shots, picking them apart, putting my punches you together know, like that. When we get to opponents, this guy was supposed to last you like eight, like six, seven rounds. I, I try my best to just figure out what punches right. are gonna work. I've grown even from this fight. I've grown like what punches to work, and because I'm I'm still throwing out in this fight. But you see how this guy is like taking the punches yeah, and he, coming. F he, he's still coming for. He's still taking it. You know, yeah, it's durable. Yeah, it's very durable. Yeah, it was, it was a real tough guy right there. Yeah. 
Did you think that after these three rounds, you kind of like elevated your game to another level? I think so. I, I really do think so. Oh, this was against Salgado. This was the next fight, my 10th fight. This was also my first fight with Robert Garcia. And uh, what we were doing was we we're trying to fight more smart, not so much uh, just brawling. Was that the biggest adjustment you think you've made since you went to the Garcia camp? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I went from straight up brawling to kind of boxing brawling in a way, you know, like I'm still letting my hands go, but smarter and right. I keeping my distance. Virgil, do you do much sparring with uh, Mikey Garcia? Recently, no, but I have helped him and he's helped me with a few fights in the past. He's just, he doesn't have a fight lined up. He's not in the gym too often right now. Sure. Got it. How do those sparring sessions go? Oh, my, my very first sparring session with him, that, that's like the most experience I've ever gotten in the ring. Because I'm not going to lie, he schooled me that, that first time I sparred him. And it, it really showed me how different the levels are, you know? And, mm -hmm. man, I learned a lot. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that's some, that's some quality sparring right there. So this is Mauricio Herrera. Yes. I was at this underneath fight. Canelo, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, fight. I, I went into this, I went into this fight with low confidence. I'm not gonna lie. I did not think I was gonna knock this guy out at all, or even look good. So just I because just, of his uh, experience to, and. Yeah, and I've seen his past fights. You know, he's uh he's very difficult to look good against. I mean, you take a look at that uh that Danny Garcia fight. What he was able to do to him, oh, the yeah. world class. He won fight that or fight. I think he, he won, won that, that fight. Only because it was in Puerto Rico. They, they very didn't tricky. Not. Very but, tricky. But even since this fight, Virgil, to the ones in the highlights we saw, you can see a little bit. You're more patient, more, more, a little more um, uh, composed with the punches and selective. It's not just a two fist of fury, right? Right, right, right. You're right. measuring your yeah. distance. Yeah, I was, I was trying uh, really hard to pick the right shots. No. Arreta had yet to be stopped or or knocked out for that matter. So the first round went pretty well, picking the shots as usual. Not really so much filling them out anymore. I'm starting to go after him, right. trying to find the openings. Was he? Did you find him elusive and difficult to hit, or you just once you found your timing and spacing? At times, yeah. I feel like if I would have just went in there trying to knock him out in the, like the first second round, it, it would have looked. A lot more sloppy. Uh, I would have been missing a lot more right. punches. So he would have used that to his advantage. But I didn't let him use that. I set up the beautiful the jab uh, over right. Yeah, oh. you, you do that little feint and boom. Jeez. Yeah, I, I threw a jab and I saw him retaliate with the jab right back. So I'm going to do it again, but I'm, I'm going to half-ass the first jab and then I'm going to throw right over his and it, it, yeah. it landed. Yeah, yeah. yeah you change yeah. it up. That was beautiful. Look at him, I was like, I don't know what hit him right now. He has no idea where he's at, but Ooh. but he's still there. He is still there. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's the one thing about Herrera is that mm. he can take the punch, but he knows how to he knows how to recuperate yep. that much faster than everybody else because of his experience. Yeah, know? savvy veteran. Yeah. That was nice. Like, seeing that replay again, I saw you set that up you, you, with the with the jab to, to the to the belly, and then you fainted and came over the top with that big right, right and boom. Then you let both of them. I was already throwing. Uh, Beautiful, right here, like a boom. He didn't even finish the jab. I was already throwing the right. I knew he was gonna throw it. Who puts your hand wraps on? And do your fists or your knuckles hurt after after a fight? You know, because when you give somebody a coscorron, you know it hurts, right? Uh, yeah, rubber. Uh, he, oh, he does my like, wraps. Oh. And it depends. Sometimes it, it really depends. Yeah. You know, it just depends if really I'm hitting sore. to the head a lot or. Maybe if right. you hit an elbow, you don't know. It, it just depends. Yeah. You, you know how it is. Or you don't. Or you don't. Yeah. Or you don't have your fist closed. Right. The right way, and you hit somebody right on top of the head, bro. Oh, that hurts. You can break your oh. hand. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah. Yeah. It depends, especially with the gloves too. You know, sometimes the wraps don't fit in, and you can't close your hand properly as well. Exactly what you're talking about. It right. can be the gloves too, or it can be the wraps, a combination of both. Beautiful right hand. Look Beautiful at that. right. Caught him right at the end, right there. After this fight. Virgil, did did your confidence just go to an all-time high right here? I wouldn't say all-time high, but I started believing myself a little more. And uh, I started seeing that my level isn't... The gap between the world champions and me isn't as wide as I thought it was. Right. Mm, okay. Right. 
Well, this is another That's fight a good that, way to put I, it, yeah. that is a great way to put it, right. a very mature way. And this is another fight that I thought further proves that, too, because Antonio Orozco is a tough dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tough dude and 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 um, has been in there. I mean, former champion himself and has been in there with really tough guys and quality opposition and a much different style of fighter right. than Mauricio right. as well. Well, and, the, and he's at his peak and he hits hard. Mm -hmm. um, I heard him say the He knows how to use the ring. Yeah, that was a good one. Right. right. A lot of people. And that's one thing I like. I right, you can you can sense it, right? You can see it in his eyes, or or. Yeah. When you when you hit him, you can see it in his eyes, and they make a certain move, and yeah. you know you have him, so you go after right. him, you know. Oh, and he lets those hands go. Good, great, great finisher. And this was in your hometown, too, uh, Virgil. How did you like that? Because some people can find it a distraction and more added pressure. Um, how how did you feel about fighting in your hometown? Oh, it um, uh, it wasn't pressure or distraction at all. If anything, you know, it motivated me even more. It gave me a lot more energy, and I really needed it for this fight because this guy brought it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. How many miles are you running these days? I, I know you love running, right? You, I mean, this guy can run a marathon. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I run three to six miles. It just depends, you know. Uh, okay. And it depends. I'll run right before the gym, right before sparring or after. Oh, wow. It just depends. The oh, beautiful wow. work. That, look at to look the body. Nice. And I like because he throws like oh, oh, look at those, those hooks, huh? cuts are beautiful. Yeah. And like and he doesn't crowd himself. He gives a lot of space with the arms. That's beautiful. Yeah, I try my best that's not to crowd myself. You know, that's yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I remember. Here, I remember when he fought um, in Dallas, underneath Canelo, and mm -hmm. uh, he told Jerry Jones, mm -hmm. "You watch, one day I'm gonna fill up this place." Hey, I love and we it. believe it. We, the, yeah. At the pace he's going, oh yeah, the world titles he can win. I believe he can fill up the Dallas Stadium one day. I love it. That's right because you're you're right from um, uh, Grand Prairie, no? Yeah, uh, it, I just like the suburb like outside of Dallas. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's right. Hey, so, Vir so Virgil, how, did you grow up in like the same gyms as like Errol Spence? Isn't he from that area too? Yeah, we came right from the same gym. It's called a uh, Vivero Boxing Gym in Oak Cliff. Yeah, I used to train with them. Beautiful. Oh, so it's the same gym. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like Did you guys ever spar together? Yeah. Uh, no, because I, I was uh, small at the time. I was about nine or ten, so I'm like eighty pounds. He was already like one forty. So he he was, oh, you know, he's kind of old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a lot of weight on you there. <laughs> yeah, he did. No, but I used to watch him spar all the time. You know, uh, I mean, we Look always knew I mean, he was going to be something. You know. Look at those combinations, huh? I mean, beautiful combinations, incredible. man. And everything's Great. with bad intention. Bad intention. You know? And then what, uh, what a finisher. To, uh, let, the, the way you let both hands go. And again, two. we just saw two world-class back-to-back opponents that right. you finished in real impressive fashion. And nobody's man. doing that. No. Virgil, so, you know, it, it, we, we talked about Oscar uh, is predicting great things, and, and uh, a lot of people obviously uh, um, have these bright uh, uh, plans ahead for, for your future Ring Magazine, like I just said, mm -hmm. uh, called you the prospect of the year. In the landscape of uh, the welterweight division, in your mind, what would be the perfect roadmap to who would you like to fight eventually for the title? I'm not sure who I would fight for, you know, my first title, but, you know, I do want to fight all the ones, like, literally all of them. I, I want them all, you know. There's a, a Danny Garcia. I think that fight would be a, a great fight. I think Errol Spence would probably be, like, I, I don't want to say, like, the boss, you know, but I think that we would probably unify at the, the Cowboy Stadium mm. or maybe right. uh, at 154. You never know. I think he, he will still move at 154 one of these days, but yeah. I, I want to fight everyone, you know, and I'm I'm happy that, I'm in a competitive weight division. You know, I don't want to win a belt uh, in an easy fight or easy division. I'm not going to feel like I earned it, you know? Oscar, that was cool, man. <laughs> uh, I think Virgil um, is such an exciting fighter. He's definitely he the future. And uh, I love how focused and, and prepared he is. So we're going to see a hell of a fight Friday, July yep. 24th against a very tough opponent with Vargas. Uh, don't forget the zone yep, again Friday, July 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Big shout out to Casa Mexico Tequila. Salute and, and salute. That's right. <laughs> don't miss Virgil Ortiz Jr. versus Samuel Vargas, July 24th, only on the zone.